Hello everyone and welcome to this video overview of our first evidence-based instructional practice module where we are focusing on establishing the learning environment. My name is Carrie McDaniel and I'm joined today by Misty Higgins and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards at the Kentucky Department of Education. And this year we are focusing our work around addressing two essential questions. What evidence-based instructional practices or EBIPs best support Kentucky educators in designing classroom instruction aligned to the Kentucky academic standards? And how might teachers effectively implement these practices to help students meet the expectations of the CAS? We are currently in our third year of the three year implementation plan that is focused on evidence based instructional practices. So really addressing that question of how do we support educators in designing instruction aligned to the cast by drilling down on effective evidence based practices. So then why should we focus on evidence based instructional practices? I think we would agree that all students deserve access to quality standards aligned grade level instruction because we know from research that the instruction students receive in the classroom has an impact on their overall achievement. By intentionally and strategically selecting and utilizing EBIPS, teachers help to ensure that students are working towards reaching their intended learning outcomes. We will be releasing six total EBIP modules in the fall of 2021 and spring of 2022. Here you can see the release dates for each individual evidence-based instructional practice. While there are numerous EBIPs we could have chosen, these six were strategically selected because they support students in reaching their intended learning outcomes across all content areas and within the CAS. For each of the six professional learning modules, we will be releasing a video overview, facilitation considerations for structuring the professional learning, a general overview which helps educators gain a better understanding of each EBIP and its importance, an introduction to the released EBIP and what the research currently says about it, and content specific resources that support implementation. So specifically, how can you implement this EBIP for math, reading and writing, science, and social studies. So now let's look at the first evidence-based instructional practice, which focuses on establishing the learning environment. There are five key areas addressed in the narrative portion for this practice. The introduction provides a quick overview of the importance of purposely creating a safe and supportive environment and the benefits for students when that occurs. The second section examines the research on the role emotions play in the learning process and how for learning to occur, educators must not only focus on students' academic learning, but also on the social and emotional factors that affect student learning. The next section takes a closer look at the importance of fostering teacher-student relationships and six specific actions teachers can take to help develop those relationships. In the section focused on establishing the physical and social environment, educators will examine how they can create safe classrooms through establishing clear expectations and classroom agreements, as well as through the physical layout and appearance of the room. Finally, the last section focuses on proving student motivation by developing student sense of efficacy and promoting a growth mindset. In addition to the narrative portion that summarizes the current research on establishing the learning environment, we have also included content specific resources focused on the following three areas of support. Connections between the practice of establishing the learning environment and the Kentucky academic standards for that content area. Planning considerations for implementing this practice in each content area to ensure equitable access and opportunity for all students to learn the standards within the CAS. And then finally, strategies and resources to support educators in implementing this practice in their classroom to support students in meeting those intended learning outcomes. So thank you for watching this overview of our first evidence-based instructional practice. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to either me or Carrie. 